website. Praise God. I want you to know that strength is given to you from God. Amen. Praise God. And I pray that as we go deep into the study, we continue on the series of demonology. Praise God. Can I hear you say demonology? Praise God. It's the study of um, disembodied spirits and how they operate, how we can check their activities. Amen. There is nothing you do that won't get attention from hell. Whether you do something good or you do something bad, hell will want to come after you. Whether you are a noisemaker or you are a quiet person, Satan will want to come to you. You don't need to be a degree holder to bypass the activities of Satan. Even Jesus, as the anointed one, Satan came after him from birth. Praise God. The Bible says when Jesus was born, as a great destiny was born, many souls died. Are you aware that when Moses also was born, great deliverer, many souls died. Hell will never want to leave a great man alone. Demons will always want to fight the, the man that God has assigned. When you see a person with a great assignment, watch the kind of attack they experience. The amount of attack a person carries or experience tells of the amount and the gigantic vision God has bestowed upon them. Can I get your amen? So when you are experiencing some kind of a, a, a demonic oppression, demonic attack. Satan is not giving you any free chance. He's hitting you back to back. You know, he's, he's, he's pressurizing everything around you. That is because he is trying to make sure that everything that you are doing, you will abandon the vision. Can I hear you say, I will never abandon my vision? Can I hear you say again, I will never abandon my vision? Praise God. And today we are going to be looking at one great destiny that Satan held captive for long. The Bible says that the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. He said, even the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Even though you are a lawful captive, because you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you must be delivered. Because one of the assignments of Christ is to set the captives free. It doesn't matter how the person was captivated. If the person may be a lawful captive, no problem. But the person must be set free. Because Jesus has declared his soul. One of the things the anointing does is to break yokes. And break chains and break fetters of irons. Set men free. Set women free. From the captivities of hell. It is possible a person can be walking on the street looking healthy and hearty, but that person has been captivated by hell. It is possible that a person may be walking in a company in a very lucrative you know, environment. You know, you're doing a good job. People are looking at you and say, oh, this person got a good job. This person is doing something good, but Satan has captivated that person. Every captivity in your life or in your family, in the name of Jesus, as we expose the satanic kingdom and bring them to judgment, in the name of Jesus, I judge every power from your father's house. In the name of Jesus, I decree that every altar that have decided that you will not rise above where you are, be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. In the book of Mark chapter 5, you, you, are, you, you are marked for success this season in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Going to be reading from verse number 1. Mark chapter 5. Verse number one, and they came over onto the other side 
of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Verse number two. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with what? An unclean spirit. And you already know what an unclean spirit is. They are demons, disembodied demons. This man was possessed with an unclean spirit. And when, see, let me tell you, poverty is associated with witchcraft. <laughs> you know, when you go to the countryside, when you go to your village, because a woman can be old and very poor, people will mistake her to be a witch. But the main wizard that built big mansion, enjoying himself, because of the wealth, nobody sees that person as a witch, as a wizard. Poverty is one of the weapons the devil uses to give you mistaken identity. So that's why you must not allow yourself to be poor. Amen. Even though you were not born with a gold spoon, don't die without one, without putting one in your mouth. I have refused to be poor. Amen. Me too. I am declaring today that I will be one of the greatest that has ever lived. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't get angry. I am only fulfilling scripture. The Bible says, as we speak, so he will do for us. Praise God. So, what am I saying? This man, the demons inside of him could not keep him in the palace. They dried him and kept him in the tombs. Praise God. The man was possessed with an unclean spirit. Verse number three. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. No man could buy them, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been, had been plugged asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Sometimes you see some attitude of some ladies, some young men, they are very, very violent. It's a demon. When you look at the person, you say, oh, nobody could tame this young man in the family. He's just going about mashing up everywhere. It's because there is a spirit that has possessed his mind. Hallelujah. Now, one of the characteristics I want to show you about demons is this. When a person is possessed by a demon, they intend to have some physical strength, extraordinary strength. If you read that scripture, the Bible says when they put him on chains, he breaks the chains. Even irons, he breaks iron. What a strength. I remember some time ago, I was preaching. And the demon inside of this little girl, a girl of 16, 17, the demon cried out with a loud voice and started scattering everywhere and became so violent. I told the young man, hold that down. Do you know that 10 men could not hold this 16, 17 years old girl down? When they hold her, she will pull back like this and whoa, all of them will be on the floor. Ah, I was up there. I said, wonderful. This girl, she has so much anointing to, to dispose today. I said, let me wait a little bit and watch this drama. The men were tired. I said, hey, hold her. You must hold her. Hold her down. She was cry. At some point, the men, they started getting tired. You see, that is where I love God. The Bible says it's not by might. It's not by power. 
He said, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers, against wickedness in high places. The darkness of this present world is nothing to be compared in the, during the time of the Garden of Eden. Do you know that Satan has upgraded? Satan upgrades every now and then. And as a believer, you cannot deal with the devil you dealt with when you were 15 years old. You want to deal with the devil with the same pattern you're dealing with. Come on. The Satan and the demons we have today, they've upgraded. They have updated their software. This is 2021. And nobody has seen 2021 before. Have you? No. Just as we come together, the Bible says, do not forsake the garden of the brethren. Just as we come together and hold meetings and update ourselves, and I preach to you, that is how principalities talk to other younger demons. Give them instructions. Maybe today or maybe next week, I'm going to enter into another dimension to tell you how demons think and how they reason. You will know that there is nothing different. Hallelujah. And when she was ranting, I pointed towards her. I said, you! I see, they know you if you are anointed. Demons have intelligence. They know. You cannot pretend like the seven sons of Skiffa. If you are not anointed, they know. If you are afraid of them, they know. They know without you saying it with your mouth. Because they read your mind. Demons can read your mind, but they can't set your spirit. Remember, it's only the Spirit of God that has the ability to set your spirit. But demons can read your mind. And fear comes from the mind. Am I communicating? When you are dealing with a demon-possessed person, the first thing that you want to do is to have confidence and when you are dealing with demons Satan also is speaking to you do you know that as the Holy Spirit speaks to you that's how you hear voices also inside your head sometimes you want to pray for somebody the, the voice Satan will remind you and say you remember sister Mark that laid hand the other day on that brother her hand swelled <laughs> you see how this demon is shaking everybody in the church you better avoid you avoid this demon and before you know it you entertain fear fear is the policeman of the devil before satan will attack he will first of all send one particular group and that is the demons responsible for fear and intimidation that's why when you are speaking to a demon possessed person they are very and more especially the marine spirit the water spirit they are very arrogant and proud they open their eye and want to intimidate you you want to pray they say, hey shut up i tell you demons can tell you shut up and before you know it you will just be quiet a, a demon from a man tried it with me he said shut up i said hey you shut up in the name of jesus because when they tell you to shut up and you don't say anything, that battle is over. No matter what you're doing, you can't cast that demon out. No matter what you do, you cannot defeat that demon. That day, that battle is over. Just close church and go. Because in the realm of the spirit, they have the ability to put you on a scale immediately. And know if your fire is able to burn the grass. And when I said to her, you there, you could see the attention. 
just the same thing Jesus did to this man in the gathering she gave me attention and I said to her I said as I start stepping down from this podium walking to you you better start walking out of her now let me tell you I never laid hands on her because when I speak I speak with the confidence of Christ in me is the hope of glory am I communicating I am not trying to cast out demons via my power no I am only instilling and enforcing what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary the Bible says he made an open show of them bringing them up come on and as I started walking towards her she was evaporating out of the girl just like that before you know it fair and that was it it was done this was somebody that 10 men could not hold let me show you what Jesus did in verse number 5 of Mark chapter 5 verse 5 and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones demons can possess a person to the extent that they start hurting themselves that's why the body that god has given to us is a gift we must take care of this body and demons they when they possess a person they don't just want to leave they want to kill that person and destroy that body The Bible says he will be cutting himself. And I don't, I don't know if you have had the experience of having a, some kind of being high on something. Praise God. Maybe being high on a drug or being high on marijuana or whatever it is. There is a stage you get to that you are now no longer in control of yourself, but your mind is alive. I want to explain to you how people that are um, that are insane how they reason the spirit of insanity is a demon is a there is a demon behind it and when that demon steps inside of a person the person's subconsciousness is alive that's why if you go close to a madman at least he has five minutes out of 24 hours to speak correctly that window is his real self immediately that window tries to open they close it more and they, they, they take over his mind what are they after your mind so while he was cutting himself look at that the Bible say crying and cutting himself with stones why will he cry because it's the body that is experiencing the pains not the demons that's why I am I kick against I kick against I kick against many many pastors that don't understand deliverance I've seen a pastor that uses cane literal cane to flog demon possessed person praise god aha <laughs> say you're possessed eh? say yes okay bring the cane they call it anointed cane and they flog the person it is the person the the, the human being that you are beating and weeping spirits are not they are disembodied spirits demons are disembodied spirit you can't feel them with your natural hands you can only deal with them via your spiritual ability and the foresight that god has given to you to detect their activities around so such kind of pastor is so carnal and doesn't understand spiritual warfare verse number six I hope you're with me verse number six but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him now when you hear he ran and worship him it wasn't the man it was the demons 
pastor what are you trying to say are you saying that demons they worship christ let's read on i will explain to you verse number seven and christ with a loud voice said what have i to do with thee jesus so it can't be the man that was speaking <laughs> Jesus, thou son of the most high God, they knew him from the beginning. Remember, I told you last week that demons are fallen angels. They are older than you and I. They know even deeper things and deeper secrets than you and I. The only way you could come to that height to know what demons know is to understand the scripture, the word of God. So for them to identify. So demons have the ability to identify. They could identify. And they identify that this person, the whole world doesn't know him. But this is Jesus. And they identify, do you know by this time, Jesus has not even opened up his ministry so much. But they knew who he was. They said, Thou son of the most high God. Demons. <laughs> Your identity in the realm of the spirit is not hidden from them. Who you are is not hidden from them. If you are not a serious believer, demons know. If you are a serious believer also, demons also, they know. If you're a believer that is not on fire, you are that lukewarm believer as, as, as spoken about in the book of Revelation. They know who you are. And if you are that believer that is on fire, burning day and night, they also know too who you are. And they also know that if you are that believer that you were on fire, but your fire has started diminishing, they know. It's just like your, your fuel gauge. Is going down and you're not refilling. They know. And let me announce to you, people of God, you can't kill demons. <laughs> they are unkillable. Hello? Even the lake of fire which they will be thrown to is not to kill them. It's to keep them there for eternity in bondage. But pastor, why? You don't kill spirits. Spirits don't die. They exist in the spirit realm. I explained to us last week about the, 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 the three levels of man. The spirit, the soul, and the body. That's why the Bible says that the soul that sinneth shall die. The spirit returns back to God. But the soul is you, your consciousness, your mind. That's why some of, I, I, and I tell you how, how, how demonic worship started. Can I tell you? I do worshiping started from a kind of activity when somebody loses their loved one they go and get an image back this this is dated back as centuries ago they carved an image of that person literally and keep that image in a special place in the home and when everybody is eating they also take the food of that person that they lost. Go to keep the plate in front of that image. Now watch. What will I even use? Look at this. You see this stuff here, this flower vase? This can be an altar overnight. You, you don't need to do blood sacrifice. Just come here and bow to this. Bow to it and give it a name. Do you know what happens? A demon comes immediately to inhabit it. 
These are things you have to understand. Just the moment, that's why God said, do not bow to any graven image. Why do you think he said that? Because a man is always craving to something. And when they decide to do that, continually, each time they are having festival, they remember that person. They call that image by the name of that person. Remember, Im immediately a man dies. That is it. His face is judgment. He's gone. But a spirit called familiar spirit comes and inhabits that image. Now, when he inhabits that image, the day the family members don't come and drop something like food for that image, you will just hear that some people have started dying in the family. And they will now foolishly go back again to Satan, one of Satan's agents called a witch doctor. The witch doctor will take his something and shake and shake and shake and shake. The obia man will shake, 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 shake. The next thing he will say, oh, that image you people have behind the house that you did for one of your cousins that died, you have not given that image a chicken all this while. So the spirit of your cousin is angry. It is a big lie. That is a familiar spirit. These days and time, people play with things they don't need to play with. Some miss their loved ones to the extent that they go to um, this wizardry activities and say, please call up my loved one. I'm going to touch all these things. And you will see the spirit we possess the person there and the person will start sounding like their love and their love they lost that is not your your father or your mother that is a familiar spirit do you know that the same thing also saw did when when uh, when, uh, when 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 samuel died and he never had the prophet to speak for him he went and consulted, knowing that God has given instruction that do not consult a wizard or a witch. But he went and consulted a witch, disguised himself, and he told the witch, he said, can you call up the spirits of Saul, of, of, of Samuel, prophet Samuel? Now, some Bible scholars have argued that the person that spoke was prophet samuel and i said to them that if that is prophet samuel then we should not tell anybody that there is what they call familiar spirit i was talking to somebody i said that is not prophet samuel the bible says, once a man dies after death is judgment he's gone has nothing to do there is no communication what did did the angel said to the rich man in hell he said, this side that we are and there, he said, there is a big valley you can't cross. So why will God bend his status because of somebody? No, that it is not possible. It is not what? Possible. The dead don't speak. Even Jesus didn't speak when he died. He resurrected first before he could be able to say something. God is not a protocol breaker. He doesn't break protocol. Jesus died. That was it. Nobody heard from him again. And on the third day, according to the prophecy, the Bible says he resurrected again. Standing flesh and blood that was the greatest wonder ever seen somebody say i hear you even when thomas was doubting him he said to thomas why doubt thou 
and the Bible said Jesus showed his hand and asked Thomas to dip your finger through the hole. And Thomas actually, as his name is, actually put his finger in there. When he put it, the hole was real. He touched Jesus. He said, this is you, master. Jesus said, it is I. That was when he believed. So Jesus wasn't a ghost. Somebody said, oh, I saw the ghost of my, of my, of my mother. Hello, shut up. That is not your mother. That is a familiar spirit trying to gain access back to your family. Because they always, they can use the identity of people to appear to you. Some of us have, 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 have connection with demons. And that is part of what is ruining our lives. How can you be a believer and your mother is late for the past 15 years? You keep having visitation of your mother. Every night you sleep and you are a believer. You speak in tongues. Something is wrong with you. And you are not even bothered. You are not bothered. Paul say, when we lose our loved ones, let us not cry like though we have no hope. We don't, in this ministry, we don't mourn. We celebrate departure. It doesn't matter how old you are. Of course, the time has not come for anybody to depart. So when the time comes, we will celebrate departure. Because it's like a flight. When you are, when you are escorting or, you know, you know, you know, joining somebody to the airport to go with them to the airport so they fly. You are not traveling. They are traveling. Do you, because you are in the airport, they tell you you must travel. So it is also when people go to the burial ground, they don't journey with the person. The person's time has come to take the flight. They have taken the flight. Everybody go back and continue your walks. That's not to say that when a loved one dies, you shouldn't cry. No, crying is an emotional expression. But that's why Paul said, don't act like you have no hope of seeing the person. A, on that glorious day, I will see you, you will see me. We will recognize each other. Because spirits have memory. And the Bible says that on that day we shall be translated. Everything. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, mortality shall put on immortality. If you are here on that day when the trumpet sound, your body will be translated. Because there is, there is nothing sweet about this, this earth and this life. I tell you. The realm of the spirit, you don't take transportation. You just think it, you are there. Do you, okay, fine. Let me, let, me, let me teach you something. Do you know you can travel to your house now within a second? Close your eyes, everybody. Shut your eyes. You are at your door now. You just opened your door. See how you're walking around your sitting room? You know exactly where everything is, how you kept them. And you, right now, as you shut your eyes now, you're seeing them. How powerful is that? That's the power of the mind. Open your eyes. Now, when a person dies in this rain, they shut their eyes, their eyes open automatically in the realm of the spirit. Everything is still the way they can feel it. The only thing they can't interact with the living. Because the Bible said there is no connection between the living and the dead. That's why you must not allow anybody lie to you that a dead woman has the ability to come back to speak. Ta! For we are in this place. Such things annoys my spirit and irritates me. And you see believers, born again, child of God, tongue blasting, Holy Ghost filled, you know, blood wash. Is believing this whitewash. Oh, 
What nonsense. That's how even in the church, they have allowed demonic worship to take place. The pastor dies and members are saying, oh, pastor is appearing to us. Which pastor? <laughs> so there was a church, you know, I was by myself cooking. And that was back home. And they called me. I don't even know the pastor. Somebody just called me and said, please come. Our pastor just died. I abandoned what I was cooking. I said, where is your church? They told me. I jumped into the car, drove down to that place. They, they laid him on the altar. When I went there, they were shouting, oh, Holy Ghost, this, that, praise God, have mercy. I looked at the man. <laughs> Look again, look deep. They were pouring him anointing oil inside his nose and everything. I said, Jesus, even though the man wants to resurrect, this one self will not make him to resurrect again. <laughs> I stood there, wait to the, the associate pastor was dancing like somebody in the disco. I just say, in Jesus' name, everybody say amen. I say, go and bury him. Everybody was like, I said, bury the man. God said he has taken his son. That you want to go and beat God. This person is gone. And I told the as a pastor, I said, you, you're pouring oil inside of your bishop's nose because he's lying down here, soaking his ear, eardrum with anointing oil. Let him catch you on that day. He was just looking at me. I said, wait, let him scatch you on that day. There are certain things that when we see them, we just got to know there's something somewhere. It's not right. A pastor I used to know back home, a senior minister, was doing well, but he could not wait. He was in a haste, anointed by God. But he needed a hasty success. That's why you see me. I am not in competition with anybody. If God gave me five members, he, that is what he wants me to handle. And I cannot break my... Me, I can't kill myself. Oh. Hello? Ah, no, Jesus didn't say do ministry and die. He told us that he will build his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Minister, pastor, bishop, be careful. Because where you are trying to make it work by your strength, you will be broken. And the whole members will leave the church and look for another shepherd immediately. The next door. And this man, and I will tell you why sometimes demons have legal access. Why they have legal access. And this man, as a pastor, doing nice, but he wanted fame. The same thing Satan tried to deceive Jesus with. In the book of Luke, the Bible says he took him up to the mountain, showed him all the cities and the glory. He said, if only you will bow before me, all this will be done. You know what Satan did? Satan brought the future to the present and showed it. And that's what he does to some of us. And you buy into it. Mr. Pastor wanted to become rich over time. And he went and took black power to run church. And nobody knew he was he started operating in a kind of way suddenly he was born a prophet operated as a prophet but he wanted something urgently why he said because that's why i tell church leaders don't mortgage the church it will put you in a stress that you will not depend on god anymore 
because he took loan from the bank to buy a landed property to build the church and he started falling short he needed money quickly and he bought into this bad association they initiated him into a cult that was it for him and one of the qualifications is that you must do three so successful so traveling before you attain the greater height he only see satan knows what he's doing at his first attempt he didn't come back to his body he did not come back and that was it for him the moment that happened they were trying to revive him pray his sister, the other city, said he came to the house. That same moment, he died. And saw the children. I said, go and call your mother. Before they could come out, he's gone. You know what happened? That kind of scenario, the person is trapped between this life and the next. So, he's like, you know, just in and out. In and out, in and out. It takes a period of 14 days for that death to be affirmed. So at that point, the soul of that person has been trapped. So that person could appear physically and has the ability also to disappear, but it won't last for too long. Because within the space of that 14 days, it will be affirmed that you cannot go back anymore. That's why I advise pastors, say, don't get yourself choked up with loans. Some of this money, they are traps. Do what you can as little as you can. Don't overstretch yourself. Because Holy Spirit wants to use you, but your body needs rest. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Praise God. Are you there? Put that scripture back. Now, this man was cutting himself. At the same time, he was crying because of the torment. Now, the identity of Christ was not made known, but demons were able to pick the signal. Are you seeing that? Now he said, Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjourn thee by God that thou torment me. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Demons are even telling Christ that in the name of God Almighty, please, don't torment us. How powerful you are as a believer. Now, this is Jesus <laughs> manifesting divinity in the place and in the presence of humanity. Now, the Bible says Christ in you. Ah, what a reality. Christ that is in you is the hope. So, we are not now expecting Jesus to come and do it. The Jesus is in you. You plus Christ becomes even more powerful weapon to destroy the camp of the enemy. Are you with me? And verse number 8 for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean what when you are talking to demon possessed people don't try to negotiate you know just command them what demons understand is command order and command give them command they will obey but if you try to speak your voice is shaking you are entertaining fear or doubt 
because they know you sometimes there was a time i did some experiment i was praying for a demon possessed person and i called one of my associates i said come lay hands on this demon possessed person he was busy laying hand there and nothing was happening the demon was just having a feel of the day and i call one other one that is very dedicated i said lay hands by the time his hand was coming the demon screamed they know your level jesus said for he said unto him come out of the man down on clean spirit verse 9 verse number 9 and he asked him what is thy name one of the ways to handle demons when you are casting them out is that you must know who they are all demons are not the same and they have departments they have different identity it's just like all of us here we are all believers is it not we have one identity in christ but the Bible says, as our faces are different, so it is also our heart desires that are different. Look at our faces, different. But one thing connects us, which is the blood of Jesus. So it is also in the realm of the spirit. They are all demons, but they have areas of specialty. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 12 down, identify those areas, principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world they are not the rulers of the darkness of this world are not the same as the principalities and powers they have hierarchies so jesus was able to interrogate the demon and he asked him what is thy name and the demon answered and said saying my name is what my name is what for we are what? Many. <laughs> because imagine the, the scenario or the, 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 the challenge that will be there that the name of this particular demon is called Legion. And yet you are praying, you water spirit inside of this person. In the name of Jesus, come out. Now, you know what will happen? This, the demon will just cross their leg and be fanning themselves. You know why? If an angel comes and says, aren't you hearing that you should be? He say, but he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> Demons can be very funny. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't talking to us. He didn't call us. He was calling those other people. And by the law in the realm of the spirit, you cannot quit a spirit without you identifying who they are. That's why some of us, we pray midnight prayers, but we have been wasting our midnight prayers all these years because we pray amiss. For ye shall know the truth. The truth you know shall make you free. Uh -huh. Not the prayer you pray midnight that make you free. Know what you are praying about and when you pray, you see results. You know, somebody will be praying, hey, you know, and be bragging at the same time. You know, I'll be praying, I'll be praying every midnight for the past 20-something years. And when you call them, what are you praying about? They say, um, you see, ha, ah, mm, what is it said? You know, I pray about a lot of things. That person is confused and we never have any results. Because there are protocols and principles you cannot break in the realm of the Spirit. So when they told Jesus and say, my name is legion for we are many give me verse 10 give me verse number 10. verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country now you see when you say territorial demons yeah you you hear what they said back to jesus they were begging jesus please don't send us away from toronto just you know, cast us out, but allow us to hang around Toronto. Territorial demons. They are not as the same as witches and wizards. In fact, a witch is a human being that has taken the form of satanic powers. 
A witch is not a demon. Get that correct. A wizard is not a demon. A wizard is a human being that has taken so much energy and powers from the dark kingdom. Somebody say, I hear you. Verse number 11. Now there was there high, nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Ah, Jesus, send us into the swine that we may enter into there. They always want to enter somewhere. Send us there. Because one of the things they don't want to do is, to, see, that's another thing to let you know that demons can also possess animals. Some people, they have some of these animals in their house that is easily influenced by demons. As a pastor and as a deliverance minister, the only animal I will recommend that is hardly possessed by demon is dogs. A dog will never allow, because dogs have something connecting with humans. Dog is the only animal that is very friendly he could adjust himself to become a family member and a loyal family member for that matter. So, and dogs, they have the ability to see beyond the natural. That's why a dog could be barking at a particular spot. And when you look at that spot, you're not seeing anything, but the dog is seeing something. So, but when you have animals like cats, cats is very corny and has the tendency of witchcraft. When you have animals like bats, that you're keeping them in the house as pets, kudos to you. Some even keep snakes in the house as pets. May God have mercy on you. These are animals that have demonic, they, they are used as demonic symbols. Now, you see the emblem on the medical emblem, right? What is connecting snake with medicine? Have you ever bothered to ask yourself that question? What connects snake? Big snake. <laughs> there are certain things we bring in, we don't even understand what they are starbucks having an image like the marine coast the people in the world will not know but we in the kingdom will know that it has a presence of the siren spirit so sometimes what people worship they put it around their something and sell it out so it goes out a lot in the deliverance ministry that is happening that many believers need to be aware of when you hear the term witchy board who produced it how did it come to be have you bothered to ask yourself, why, how come you just go and pick a board from the market? They are selling witchy board. And you bring it into your house. You have a, a code, a, 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 an invocation words to say. You, you talk and talk and talk. You know what that does? It opens the door wide for millions, not thousands, millions of demons to invade that particular place. Some of us as believers that goes to spirited shop to buy red candle and incense. You see, one incense is able to attract 900 demons at once. 
one stick of incense. And it's not all incense. It's not the ones that has to do with nice aroma. It's those ones that they tell you that expels bad energy. They are telling you to light it in your house that it will chase away bad energy. But the actual fact is that it brings 900 demons at once into your house. And you wonder why you are having paranormal activities in your house. When everywhere you, you have demonic things. Everywhere. It's not all shops you go, you see an image you pick and bring back to your house. Because you don't know what that image was dedicated to. These demons, they, 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 they started, they, they have choice. One, they don't want to leave the territory. They know that Jesus will cast them out from that place. Now, look at what it means. A legion, the, in the Roman Empire, a legion is made of 300 footmen and 300 horsemen. Makes up a legion. Now, how come 600 demons will be inside of one individual, one human being? Demons are responsible for children's stubbornness. Demons are responsible also for a child not to be able to grasp and learn. A lot happens. And most of these things are thrown under the medical line. They just sweep it under the medical line and give it a name. Give it one big name and keep it there. It is not the will of God. Every form of disorder that is running in your family in the name of Jesus, we command orderliness to take place in Jesus' name. Are you there? I show you something in verse number 13. Verse 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the head ran violently. Now, watch. If that Bible is your own, underline the word violently. Now, if you go back. If you go back to, from verse number 2 down to verse 5, you will notice that this man also acts what? He acts violently. So this demon responsible is a violent spirit. So even if the demon leaves the man and go into any other person, that person also will still carry the same identity and start destroying themselves the same way that man was violent to himself. The Bible says he was cutting himself. So the pigs could not cut themselves. Rather, they committed suicide. Read your Bible. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave, and, un and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and their head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and yelled, choked in the sea. Six hundred demons was able to destroy how many swines? Two thousand. That's how powerful the voltage of six hundred is to two thousand. And the reason why it was able to destroy the swine was because the swine has no human capability to carry it. Because they know that Jesus will never tell them to go and possess some other person. So they chose that means and they ran violently. Am I communicating with somebody? In verse, uh, give me the next verse. And they that fed the swine fled 
told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done verse number 15 and they come to jesus and see him that was possessed now they saw the man that was possessed with the devil they knew that this was the devil troubling this man but nobody could help him because nobody had the capability that's why i say to you if any church says that oh you see in this church we don't cast out demons we don't pray against satan that church is confused and they all need to go to sunday school i mean children's sunday school because the ministry of Jesus carries deliverance. And what Christ has come to do is to make an open show of the devil. Praise God. And had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Wow. So this man can be healed. This man can be delivered. There was a church back in America I was attending. You know? And there is this woman that has come to me in my dreams several times to try me. When she could not succeed, she turned violent physically. I mean, the harassment was coming physically in the church. And the pastor of that church has been taken over by, it was, the, it was the archbishop that told me that witches don't exist in America. And I was in his church. I, I said, okay, not in America now. In this, your church, they are here. And I just told him, you see, when you want to expose the activities of darkness, all you need to do, just raise the fire level in the house. Everything that is not of God will start becoming uncomfortable. And I told him, can we declare 14 days prayer and fasting? He said, oh yeah, that's lovely, it's lovely. I said, yeah, so tell all the church members. <laughs> Every, every night in the evening, let's all gather here at midnight. Let's pray for one hour, 12 to 1, for 14 days. Ha! Come and see. How I wish we videoed that activity. This woman in the church, she ran mad. Because we were two pastors that were assisting him. So, gave the other pastor time to pray. When the other pastor finished praying, when I took the mic, the place was lit on fire. The woman could not sit down. Her body is shaking, shaking, shaking. She will run, run back here, run back here. I was looking at her. I said, hey, I know I can't really tell you directly that you're a witch, but let me raise this fire more so it, it will burn you very well. She was shouting. And when I started praying, every witch, hey, Every wizard, whosoever that is a, an agent to the devil, in the name of Jesus, we declare your demands. Let your ancestors receive you. Woo. The next day she ran to the bishop and said, why are you people praying this kind of prayers? The archbishop said, but you are praying against, he said, no. What if somebody dies in this church? <laughs> You see, eh? <laughs> if you are a believer and you don't know that satanic activity exists, even inside the church, why did God say judgment will start first from his own house? The woman came out openly. And when the archbishop said no, for the first time the man said no, let's let this, because she wants the prayer to stop. One, because her son-in-law that got married to her daughter is the major financier of the church. So they held the church bondage. They are the one to say what happens. 
You know me now. When I enter into some kind of place, I will cool that everywhere. Just scatter it. Let's all scatter it. Let everybody because if what if see, let me tell you, sometimes it's good to scatter things. When you scatter things, you build it very well. If the disciples, the early disciples, didn't scatter, do you think the gospel would have come here? All of their complacency would have held them back in Israel. They would enjoy themselves, eat the Lord's Supper, finish eating the Lord's Supper, and they will all die. And everything, Jesus coming, will be a waste. Uh -huh. So God allowed persecution to chase them, every one of them away. This one went to Arabia. This one came to Asia. This one went to the other. Paul was running from place to place. That place to place, the purpose was to preach the gospel everywhere. So sometimes it's good to just... So the next day when I came for prayers again, her eyes was red. She was looking at me. From back. Me too, I was looking at her like this. We know ourselves. <laughs> ah, after that prayer... She caught a hold of the archbishop and turned the man's heart against me. But I told him, I said, don't worry, I'll finish the work God wants me to do. I just want to open your eyes and let you know that witches exist in your church. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. In the Dunamis Palace, they have no place. They have no place, whether presently or in the future. They have no place in this ministry in the name of Jesus. Because one of the ways, before I close, one of the ways that demons uses to hold a church bound, one of the ways, one of the ways, is through the God of mammon. If the leadership is a money conscious leader, the church is gone. We are by he that pays the piper, detects the tone. The church is gone. That's why any, no matter how much you give me, you can't buy my mouth. Ah, this mouth is very expensive. Oh, it's priceless. No, give me the money I will take. I will, as I'm taking it, I'm putting it in my back pocket. I'm telling you what I want to tell you. <laughs> you can't buy it. This mouth, this mouth that God has anointed, is a preach to the, to the nations. You want to use one currency to buy it. Ah, it's unfair. <laughs> no, no, it's unfair. Ah, you want to use only one currency to buy it. You have to bring English pounds, bring, bring euro, Bring dollar. Bring. And even your blood has to be involved. Because for you to want to buy the mouth, you're a witch. So you have to die. Uh, when you bring all, all these currencies, let your blood be the last one that will come on top of it. Then uh -huh, I will now negotiate and see if I will. Nonsense. You know, that's what people do. They want to just... Boom. And when you say no... They start, they, start, they start fighting you like bulldog. Yeah. Praise God. When you are a leader that have developed an elephant skin or a crocodile skin, a skin that is hard, when the demons, even, do you know, even Jesus was tried also. Judas. Satan filled his heart. Peter also was careless. Satan came after Peter. The moment in the fold you allow yourself in complacency, that is it. You become a weapon that will be used. Even in the church. Even as a family. The Bible says, can two walk except they agree? Satan can use anybody, no matter who you are. 
That's why every day we come before God and we kneel and say, Father, if there is any ought in me, Lord, have mercy. Save me. Save me from him that is stronger than me. Deliver me from, from the, the hands of the wicked man. You pray prayer of humility. Not prayer of too much confidence that makes you feel like you don't need God anymore. Sense of arrival. I tell you, demons are very organized. You know, you can leave Canada and go to Czechoslovakia. Uh -huh. When you get to Czechoslovakia, praise God, the demons from here, we just telephone the other one and say, hey. you know, the thing is that one of our, one of our clients has arrived. <laughs> And as you're cleaning your leg, coming down from the airport, singing, I say, hey, thank God I've escaped them. From that airport, you, they will just enter inside of somebody. The person will just come and say, so you have arrived. That's why people pass through what they are passing through for one end, and they go to another end, they still experience the same thing. It is not in the traveling or in the running away that solves the matter. Stand your grounds and face the nonsense. Tell the nonsense that nonsense must come to an end. And when you finish declaring it, stand on that liberty and deliverance and claim it all the way. Next week I will show you certain things that demons do in return. Stand up on your feet. Give God thanks for the grace, for the expositions. Thank the Lord for wisdom. Thank the Lord for that that he has done. We thank you, O God of heaven and earth. I worship you, O God of heaven. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth, heaven and earth, oh, heaven and earth. Father, Lord, we worship you, we thank you. Lord, we exalt your holy name, oh Lord, for the powers of darkness, they are destroyed and they are being brought down. We thank you because we are trampling on them. For it is written, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus, every head of the serpent that has refused to bow, we crush them finally in the name of Jesus. We break, oh Lord, every chains and fetters of irons. In the name of Jesus, anyone in our families, oh Lord, that is oppressed, that is bound, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For I know that you have done it. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Praise God. Lift up.